And that's an exercise that we're trying to get you to use your legs a bit more. I see, yeah. Alright? Yeah. And these, these are just little things that we can give you suggestions that you can come and practice. Yeah. You know, to get your legs moving. What I would recommend is you bring a wobble with you. Yeah. In case you do lose the balance. Yeah. Alright?
you would feel that your legs are sort of lower down, or because they're heavier, yeah? Mm -hmm. So because they're heavier, you're having to, not really, not necessarily going to get more movement, but you're almost having to try and lift them or hold them there. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. So because they're heavy, it f uh, focuses you or... Um, to lift or raise your legs. Okay, now this is important because we feel that basically there are three stages to your legs. Um, Would you so, that? Three to my so you've got, yeah, regards to the depth. Yeah. So you've got them low to the ground, mm -hmm. medium, mm -hmm. which is the minimum standard. Right. And then the third one is high. And when they get high, you can then be technical. Right? Yeah. Now, I can give somebody technical information here. Right? So you can give it to them at the beginning of the lesson or um, early on. But as soon as you say, off you go, if they haven't got any buoyancy or flotation or position, i.e. this, mm -hmm. then the technique will go out the window because their legs will just be dropping. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. And there's no way you can do the proper technique when your legs are going down. No. It just becomes survival. Now, what I find interesting is this. If I go for a run or jog, because I am unfit, I don't know how far I can take myself, so I'm unsure on the length or the distance. I'm unsure on the distance. Um, unsure on the distance. Unsure, maybe unsure on the route. And we're not talking about swimming here. We're talking about right. me going running. Yeah. So I'll just put Adam going running. Now, if you've ever been running before, often you will go back to familiar routes. Yeah. yeah? So, when I decide to go for a run, yeah. I'm thinking about the past, and I'm thinking about um, old routines. Previous runs that I've done in the, in the past. Yeah. Right. So, and what what this got me thinking is, I'm looking to go for a run, but first of all, I'm trying to stick to regular patterns. And that, to me, surprised me, thinking, why can't you just go in a different direction? Yeah? And often, if I go in a different direction, it may be a question, is the hills, is 
Minister concerned with traffic? I'm talking about running here. Yeah, yeah. No, nothing else. No, nothing else. No. All right. So I have, like an habitual way or an old, uh, a regular pattern that I want to follow, and I'm very wary about going somewhere different. Good, because I don't, yeah. So there's me thinking, poor old Mike, I'm doing exactly the same things as what Mike's doing, yeah. but yet I'm trying to tell him to do something different. <laughs> and yet with my own running, even I'm becoming a bit wary about doing something different, because I'm thinking, well, if I go there, how am I going to get to there or get to there? So it's unknowing. It's not knowing or un unsure or not knowing how you're going to get back and where that route's going to take you. So when we are doing things that we've done previously, yeah, it takes a different mindset and it takes that leap of faith to think, I need to break that cycle. Yeah? <coughs> I need to do something different. Because if we're not careful, we're going back over old routes, old pasts, old routines, and often then when we start getting a stitch, we think, I normally stop here. So your, your, your stop is <coughs> uh, so at the same place. 